Hello everybody, it's Lucas Rubuki with another Angular JS screencast. Today we are going to be talking about the challenge of one controller communicating to another. How do you accomplish that? So it's considered bad practice for a controller to reach out and directly communicate or modify state in another controller. Yet, as your application grows in complexity, it's going to be necessary to notify other parts of your application that something has happened or to share application state from one part of the application to another. So I'm going to show you one way to do that today. So let's get started. What I have here is just a basic, uh, essentially empty Angular application. I'm bootstrapping it here, and uh, I'm referencing a module that is called my module, which I've just stepped out over here. So my module equals Angular module, my module. And uh, from here, we're going to be building off this uh, example that I'm going to be going through step by step, showing you one way to communicate and share information between controllers. So, first things first, let's build out the view. So I'm going to create uh, just a div, and I'm going to reference a controller here called, uh, let's call it controller1. And in here, I'm going to create an input field, and let's just call this, or let's attach set up a two-way date binding using ng model and let's call this property message okay so what I have here is a div with and I'm referencing a controller called controller one let's duplicate this two more times so we have controller two and controller three and I have a property on here called message that I'm binding to. Now what I'm also going to do just real quick is I am going to create a button and I'm going to put it on the first controller to, to basically kick things off. And so let's go ng click and let's say handle uh, Let's just say handle click. That's pretty self-documenting. And I'm going to pass in the message uh, property, whatever is in this input here. Okay, so from here, let's go in here and just stub out these controllers. So we said controller one, okay. So we'll just go ahead and duplicate this just two more times. And we will call this controller two, like so. And then what I'm going to do is controller. So this step right here is not exactly necessary um, but I'm going to manually inject these uh, the scope into these controllers and um, you'll see why in just a moment but it's worth mentioning that once you minify your code that it's important to actually manually uh, call out whatever you're injecting um, so angular tries to guess what you want to inject by the function parameters but once you run that through a minifier, it just kind of all falls apart. And so this is kind of a, a necessary step to, to work around that. So we're going to basically use this inject service. And we're going to say inject scope. OK. Let's just duplicate this two more times. Now, there's a lot of repeated code here, and normally I would not do that. Obviously, this is a bit of a contrived example to illustrate how you would accomplish communication 
uh, between these controllers. And so, for illustration purposes, we are going to go ahead and, and duplicate some of this code. So, the way to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and spill the beans, is that you use, you create a service, and then you inject it into each of the controllers. And so the controllers can directly call methods on the shared service or basically get, uh, you know, properties or, you know, modify properties or call methods on that. And so that is, that's one way for the, basically the controllers to talk to the service. So let's start at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and use the factory method here. This is one way to do this. Um, and let's call this my shared service. And we're going to put this factory method in here so that whenever somebody requests this service, this actually gets called. And I'm going to go ahead and inject root scope into here. And I'll explain why I'm, why I'm doing that in just a moment. And so from here, we need to create an object that we're going to return. So when this factory function is called is this object right here gets returned. And so whatever we declare on here, that is the behavior and the state that uh, the service is going to have. So we'll just go with shared service, like so. Let me just clean this code up here. And I'm going to create a property on here called message. I'm going to set it to an empty string for now. And so from here, I can let's go ahead and inject this and make this service available to this controller. So this is as simple as saying, I want to just add this into the inject service right here. And it would help if I spelt this right. And so now all three of these controllers are essentially Going to be getting this service and they're going to share it. So let's say my shared service. Okay. So from here, we need to set up some communication channels. So first things first we declared this event handler back in the HTML called handle click. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Handle click equals function. Uh, it's taking a message parameter. And what we're going to do is we are going to pass this through to a function that I'm going to create in just a moment on my shared service called what should we call this? Let's say prep for broadcast. We'll just pass this through here. So let's go up here. And what we're going to do is say, cast equals function. We're going to do this message parameter here, like so. And we're going to say this dot message equals message. Now we need to. This is getting set from controller one. We need to set this, um, or basically let the other uh, controllers know this. So we need to actually broadcast this message. So I'm going to create another method called broadcast item. We'll just go here. Equals function. Like so. And so this is where the root scope object comes in. And it's not 
root scroll. Let me just fix this typo here. So we're going to use this broadcast here. And let's create an event or define this event as um, handle broadcast. And so we're basically broadcasting this. And so let's set up something in these controllers to listen to this. Let's go on. So handle broadcast is arbitrary, arbitrary, but it's important that it matches up and you're actually listening to it. Uh, the right event. It's just a string, but let's put the event handler in here. And we are going to just update the message property to uh, like so. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just go through and put this in the other two controllers but what I'll do is to distinguish that this is happening each of these let's go three two and one And so now, let's format this code here. What we have happening is that when you click the button, or actually, let's just refresh this real quick and see if this works. Okay, test. And behold, it does. So let me explain what's happening here. So when you're calling handle click, it's saying my shared service, prefer broadcast, and it's just passing the message through. It's sending that message to the property on the shared service object and saying, and then calling this broadcast item method here, which is then saying root scope broadcast. And so what's happening is the scope objects, when you create an application, an Angular application, is that root scope is created implicitly. And scope is nothing more than just an a plain old JavaScript object with just a few APIs built to basically one uh, monitor state, but then also broadcast state. And so it works very well as an event bus. So it's saying broadcast this event. Then down here is we're listening for that event using on. And the reason why this works is because you have this root scope that gets created implicitly when you create an application. Every other scope that gets created is is actually inherits from the root scope. So you can actually pass events down through from the root scope to its children scope objects, but then you can also send them from the children scope objects back up to the parent scope objects using a variation of broadcast called emit. So very cool stuff. It's just broadcast goes down through the children, emit goes up but then you listen for the events using on. And so that is how this is working, is that, so now the children's scope objects are saying on handle broadcast, and then it is doing something appropriate. So that is what's going on, is we have basically three controllers, and in these controllers, we are injecting this shared service that is accessible to all three controllers, so that once something happens, in this case in controller one, it's saying prep for broadcast, so it's calling a method, and then it's setting state on the shared service, and then broadcasting it back out to all the controllers. So let's see that one more time. Let's say Lucas here, and there we go. Is that I'm setting the state, I'm broadcasting it, and it's going through, and. Um, basically propagating or aggregating these changes through the other scope objects. And so that is one way to do or to communicate from one controller to another in share state is using a shared service and then using root scope as the event bus. That, uh, I believe, covers it for today. I hope you've learned something. And as always, have fun coding, and I'll see you next time.